The Professional Bowlers Association presents the 20th Annual Western Region Resident Pro Championships at Palo Alto Bowl in Palo Alto, California. An elite field of the best regional professional bowlers began the tournament by rolling 10 games of qualifying. The field was then cut to the top 16 players who came back the next day for 16 games of head-to-head -head match play competition. The top three players will join five bowlers off the points list to comprise the resident pro team and represent the Western Region at the National Resident Pro Championships in Hawaii. We'll show the highlights from qualifying and match play, followed by the final position round game presented in its entirety. This was one of the Western Region's three major tournaments, so a demanding lane condition was put out for the players. It was imperative for the bowlers to make good, consistent shots, fill the frames, and stay out of trouble. Defending champion Ross Packer of San Jose did just that. He started off strong, shooting a 267 in the second game of qualifying. The 21-time champion knew what had to be done and continued to build on that game. He kept the ball in play and made his spares a very typical Ross Packer performance. As a result, he put himself into excellent position to defend his title, leading the field after the 10 games of qualifying. Ross was able to stay ahead of the hottest player in the region, Jason Hurd. The second year player from Visalia has had five top eight finishes in a row, including a second and a couple of thirds. Jason shot a big 268 game in the ninth game to secure the second qualifying spot, snapping off Joe Baca of Dublin by one pin. Joe came out red hot rolling games of 237 and 268 to take a quick lead. Unfortunately, he was unable to keep that pace for the remainder of qualifying, settling for a solid third place. A sign of a tough competitor is how he performs in the face of adversity. Is he able to dig deep for that something extra and pull success out of disaster? One of the best players at this is 1994 Bowler of the Year Mike Taylor of San Diego. The 14-time titleist who won this event in 1995 wasn't really able to get anything going until the last three games of qualifying. He finished with a flurry, shooting games of 245, 262, and 225 to jump from 18th to 5th. Los Angeles also made a tremendous move, averaging 223 for his final five games, going from 23rd to qualifying 8th it was crucial for him to make the match play because he was on the bubble for the resident pro team. He needed to finish in the top three to secure his spot for the trip to Hawaii. The biggest move came from Tim Paul of Gilbert, Arizona. He got off to a rough start, holding down 48th place, averaging just 180 for the first five games. He turned it all around, rolling games of 258, 254, 218, 225, and 204, a whopping 232 average on a very tough lane condition. That comeback performance gave him the 11th qualifying spot. First year member Craig Newcomb of Mesa, Arizona also had an excellent second block, vaulting himself from 24th into 10th. He averaged a terrific 217 for those five games. There were several other players who made moves in their second block of qualifying, all bettering their position for Sunday's match play round. Ricky Corona, three-time Bowler of the Year from Yorba Linda, 
made the climb from 16th to the middle of the pack, qualifying 7th. Ricky stayed consistent. He didn't get too high or too low and was able to keep out of trouble. In the past, seven-time titleist Rick Berry has always been able to find a way to score when he needed to. This time, he shot 235, 263, and 235 in games four, five, and six to jump from 10th to fourth and find himself in great position for match play. While last year's runner-up, Mike Dre of Felton, wanted a return shot at the trip to Hawaii for the Resident Pro Championships. He got his wish by bowling well enough to move from 17th into 14th. Several other players also performed well despite the tough lane conditions. Doug Wilcox of Sacramento, who has had a very successful rookie season to this point, has made match play finals four times and was looking to make it five. He rolled a 240 his first game and didn't look back from there. Lindsey Wong of San Jose shot a big 277 his fifth game to put him in ninth position for Sunday's match play finals. Stockton native Steve Fields has one tour title to his credit. He mustered all that knowledge and experience to fire a 235 his last game to snag the 12th spot. While Gene Brule of Petaluma, who won earlier this year in Watsonville, knew what to do in his situation, he was able to keep it clean for 13th place. Steady Ray Vallavino from Sacramento also kept the ball in play and didn't make many mistakes to qualify 15th. The last story of the day was Rick Manili and Bob Laster. They both tied for 16th, the last spot in the match play finals. This prompted a one-game roll-off to determine who would bowl the next day and who wouldn't. The current resident pro points leader, Manili, got off to a good start, throwing three in a row, while 1996 Bowler of the Year, Laster, wasn't able to get things going. Manili continued to pour on the strikes, rolling to a convincing 258 to 226 victory over Laster. This rounds out the field of 16 for the match play finals, all with their sights set on the Resident Pro Championship and the trip to Hawaii for the National Resident Pro. We'll take a break to learn about the PBA Western Region and what the Resident Pro Championships means to these players. After that, we'll be back with highlights from the head-to-head -head match play round. The PBA Western Regional Program uh, started in 1969. Uh, Eddie Elias, the founder of the PBA and our legal counselor, uh, wanted to do something for the regional players. So he decided to put a regional program together. And this is for the young players who are up and coming that want to go out on the tour. This gives them an opportunity to uh, compete in local competition. And it's like a stepping stone for them to get out on the tour. And it also serves as a purpose for the older players that have been out on the tour, come back, they get a real job, so to speak, and then want to work on weekends as far as tournaments go. So it goes each way. You, when you go out on the tour, when you come back, you have a place to bowl. And in 1969, we had one tournament, and we've grown to the point now where we have at least 22 a year, and they cover the states of California, Arizona, Nevada, Utah, and Hawaii, and that's our region. And um, the players compete for, oh, somewhere in the neighborhood of a quarter of a million dollars in prize money. And this event here that was held here at Palo Alto Bowl was our resident pro championship. And what happens is there's seven regions of the PBA, and each of them have a qualifying tournament to select the top players. There's eight from each region that compete in the tournament. And uh, the top players then go to Hawaii to bowl in the National Resident Pro Championship. And the nice thing about that tournament is the winner of the event will represent the regional program and they'll bowl in the Brunswick World Tournament of Champions in 1998. So it's a big bonus for the PBA players. Now we'll take a look at the match play portion of the tournament. 
The bowlers who have qualified for this round will bowl 16 games of head-to-head -head match play with the 16th and final game of position round. The winners of each match will receive a bonus of 30 pins added to their score. A loss results in no bonus pins. Players can move up in the standings quickly by stringing together good games and winning matches. A few bad games can also set you back just as fast. An early move was made by Craig Newcomb. He won his first three games, shooting a big 257 and catapulting himself from 10th to 3rd. Also off to a good start was Rick Berry, who won his first three matches to jump into 2nd, up from 4th. Tournament leader Ross Packard maintained his hold on the top spot by going 4-0 in his first four games. Jason Hurd won his second game with a 244 to keep pace with Packard, retaining the second spot. Rookie Doug Wilcox wasn't able to get things going and lost his first three games. He began to bring it back but hit a bump in the road against Steve Fields in game number seven. Gene Brule rolled a big 241 in game number five and a 257 in game eight to make up for a couple bad games, allowing him to move into the fifth spot. Craig Newcomb continued to make the climb through the field. Against Joe Baca in game number six, he marked in the 10th to finish off a 241 to 202 victory, moving him into second. He held that spot after the first round of eight games compiling a 6-2 match play record. Eighth place qualifier Larry Stevens struggled to begin the day, dropping five places to 13th. He got back on track with three wins in a row, propelling him all the way into sixth. Unfortunately, this didn't last long as he dropped two of the last three, pushing him back to 14th. Seventh place qualifier Ricky Corona encountered the same fate. He had a couple of bad losses and fell to 13th. Just to show that no one was immune from the bad game bug, Ross Packard lost his final two games of the block for a five and three record and dropping him back to third. Meanwhile, Jason Hurd was able to take advantage of the situation and take over the lead by winning his last two games. Joe Baca, who qualified third, had a rough first round, losing his first four matches to fall to 12. And Rick Berry also took a backwards turn after his terrific start. He dropped his final three games to end up in ninth. Rick Manili and Tim Paul were of the few that really finished strong and improved their position. Manili, the winner of the roll-off Bob Blaster the night before, hurled games of 235 and 236 to complete the jump from 16th into 6th. While Tim Paul gathered five straight victories to finish the first match play round, his achievement allowed him to secure the fourth position going into the second round. After a break, the match play finalists came back for the second eight game block. Several players started off quickly. Ross Packard was quick to regain the lead from Jason Hurd by winning his first three matches with games of 226, 211, and 212. While Doug Wilcox also started to make his move through the field, he went a perfect 4-0 in his initial four matches, including this 237 to 181 win over Larry Stevens. This performance enabled him to take over the second spot with four games to go. In a high scoring contest between Gene Brule and Rick Manili, both were lined in and matching strikes. But in the end, Manili prevailed 255 to 245. Ricky Corona got himself back together after the first block and pulled off three straight victories to move from 13th into 6th. Unfortunately for Craig Newcomb, his excellent 6 and 2 performance in the morning didn't carry over into the evening. He was unable to gain any momentum by losing his first four games and falling to eighth. 
With only a few games left, several finalists were preparing themselves for the all-important position round game. Mike Taylor put together a pair of 232 victories to get himself into fourth. Unfortunately, a bad seventh game dropped him back to eighth. But Mike Taylor doesn't go down easy, as we will hear from him again in the position round. Doug Wilcox continued his success over his opponents, winning his sixth and seventh games to amass a fabulous six and one record with one game to go. And Rick Manili moved quietly through the field, shook off a couple of bad games by rolling a huge 249 to set up his position round match. So with one game left to determine the winner of the tournament, our coverage team will show the whole position round game in its entirety. Commentators and fellow pro bowlers Paul Varela and Leo De Benedetto will bring you the action and explain the possible scenarios. With trophy and check presentations to follow, plus the interviews with the winners of the trip to the National Resident Pro Championships in Hawaii. All coming up next. Welcome ladies, ladies and gentlemen at Palo Alto Lanes in Palo Alto, California. Myself, Paul Varela and Leo Tibonetto will be giving you the commentaries on what's going on here with the top 16 professionals going for the top three places to win the title to go to Hawaii. Leo? We have, uh, after 10 games of qualifying and 15 games of match play, we have come down to the final game of match play this afternoon. Looking at the position round, we have Jason Hurd, our qualifier, facing up last year's defending champion, Ross Packer. He has 21 regional titles and over 3,300 games to his credit. This is going to be a very interesting final, ladies and gentlemen. We're hoping for a good one. We have uh, third and fourth position, Doug Wilcox, a rookie this year, and our four-time champion, Gene Brule, giving it a run this, off this evening here at Palo Alto Lanes. All four of these gentlemen here have a shot at winning a title here. Most likely we have Hurd, who's probably got about a 10-pin lead. Wilcox, Brule, any of these guys could be in the top three. So they're all having a chance to go to Hawaii. I'm pretty sure they're all looking forward to this. Pretty sure it's going to be an interesting, uh, interesting game. It'll be down to the last frame. We even have Manili and Paul. They still have a shot at it based on what kind of games they uh, produce. So we'll see you soon. We'll be sure to give you all the rundowns frame by frame. We'll do the best we can here. Paul, well, thank you. We have uh, just a couple of information about Jason Hurd this year. It's his second year out on the uh, Western Region Professional Tour. He has, in the last five single events, has finished in the top eight. He bowled very well in Las Vegas, Nevada. He finished second. Went to Tucson, Arizona and finished third. Stockton, California and finished fourth. Watsonville, California and finished eighth. And just two weeks ago at the Western Region Classic, Jason Hood shot. He bowled a 300 game and finished third in the finals. So we're looking for him as uh, possibly first time champion here this afternoon. That is right. And he's gonna be bowling against a very tough Ross Packer, defending champion. Has 21 titles under his belt. Pretty sure he's gonna look, looking forward to going to Hawaii. So. Yes, it was uh, Paul Varela here, my uh, Last year, finished third and was able to bowl in Hawaii. Well, oh, actually, no. they went to Texas. Actually, Texas. Texas, that's excuse right. me. And uh, a great time. Yes, indeed, he did. So, uh, it's a very good experience for the guys that do make the finals, make the top three. I would have so, loved to go to Hawaii, though. All right, here we go. We're going to get started. We're about. Soon. Uh, they're into their final practice shots right now, and almost underway. <clears throat> Back. 
to get to the rest of those are top three going to Hawaii. Now, the next couple spots is real close. Anybody with a big game down anywhere from four through six to possibly get that last spot. So we look for a lot of excitement in this final game. Again, we want to invite you to stick around for after the final game for the presentation of the Texas Trophy done by Logan Now, boys, you can hear those up there. You're currently playing ball tennis. Let's give you a big round of applause as we begin our final game. And the coming in the third. Okay, the balls are getting set here, and we have Jason Hurd starting on lane 11. About to make his first shot of the match, title match here. We also want to thank Rex Golubic, the owner of Palo Alto Lanes. Pretty sure we'll be here next year and the years after that. As you can see, Jason Hurd is playing a very, very deep inside line. And gets away with a nine count right there. A little high there, left the three pin. Be no problem picking it up. Just want to mention, uh, Jason Hurd here is a very good special. He hasn't missed very much frames this afternoon. I don't want to put the mockers on him already. Okay. All right, we've got a spare for Hurd. Got lane Brule. He's up on lane 14. He has a good possibility to make the top three. Right now he's in uh, fourth place right now. Behind third place by approximately 30 pins. A good game here. And winning the match could put him in the top three. Well, we have Ross Packett throwing his first ball. Looks kind of high. It trips the six pin for a strike. That gives him a lead going into the first frame. Very characteristical for Ross Packett to win the final match. He's a veteran. He just turned 50 years of age just last week. A senior PBA bowler leading the field. Gene Brule making lane 14, and that's a spare. It puts him even with Doug Wilcox. Over to lane 11 again, we're watching Ross Packett throwing his second ball. He takes his approach, very smooth bowler, and makes the double. It's his defending champion. Yeah, he's looking good, starting off strong. Oh yes, very strong. Now we got Hurd, let's see what he's gonna do. We got Gene Brule, lane 13. All of them are playing deep inside, sending it out, approximately around 17, 18. Very nice shot try. by Gene there, trips the 5-7. Lane 12, we have Jason Hurd throwing a second ball. And a strike shot. on Jason, very nice shot. Very nice. Powerful bowler. He's got very good concentration this afternoon. See, he, he wants it. He no, wants I think it. He, he does. Wants to win. Oh, yeah. He wants to go. We have Doug Wilcox on lane 14 again. He's a rookie bowler this year. Showing good numbers this year. Nice shot and ties up the match. And we have on 17 and 18, we got Rick Manili and Tim Paul. Jason has doubled in the third frame. Over to Ross Packett. Now we, here we have Rick Manili. He has a possible chance to finish in the top three as he is only 60 pins out of third spot. Right now he resides in Santa Maria. Right now he's working on a three bagger. Tim Paul is up. All the way from Tempe, Arizona. Nice shot back there on lane 18. We have Ross Packett here on lane 12 once again, his third frame. And it is a third strike by Ross. Nice shot. As you well know, most of these bowlers have already bowled 10 games of qualifying. They take the top 16 bowlers. Before this match, they already bowled 15 games match play. And here we are, last game to determine the top three bowlers. 
who will be our new Resident Pro. Well, excuse me, we won't be going to the Resident Pro, but this is the Resident Pro Championship here at Palo Alto Lane. One of the majors. Well, he had a lucky break there on lane 11 in his fourth frame. He trips out the five pin to have a solid 10. It's a pretty easy spare for Ross as he hasn't made very many mistakes throughout this tournament. During qualifying, we were told that Ross had no open frames. Yeah, he's, an easy, he's a very good spare shooter. He doesn't make a mistake. You just want to take a look at Ross as his approach is very, very textbook style, very smooth, legit very powerful indeed. Doesn't make mistakes. It covers everything. How does it look over there with Gene Brule and Doug Wilcox, Paul? Uh, right now it's pretty much even. Right now you got Gene Brule going for his fair. You have Manili on 17 and 18. Just left the 10 pin. Okay, here we have Jason Hurd again going into the fourth frame. Up with the double. Possibly could go for three. And yes, that's a turkey. Three strikes for Jason Hurd in the final match. Not giving Ross much of an opportunity early. No, no, you got to stay aggressive. You stay right with him. Don't give Ross any room. He'll take advantage of it. And you start stringing strikes. You don't stop. It's his second year out on the Western Region Professional Tour, and he's showing good qualities of a bowler and definitely has a big future ahead of him. Oh, he continues this. Definitely. He's had a great year so far. June Brill just up the seven pin. There, the ball went a little high for Jason. Left the cluster, the three, six, nine, ten. What he has to do here is push the ball to the right side of the three pin, rolling up front of the six, so it picks up the nine and the ten pin. That is, that is correct. It could be a tricky spare, but it is, it is, pick, it is playable. You can pick it up. Gene Brule on lane 13, going for a spare. Wow. And covers it. Very easy for him. Match between Brule and Wilcox. Oh, there is an open frame easy. between. But Jason Hurd, it's uh, very tough for him at this point. Leaves the door open for Ross Packett. Yeah, Ball. That was a no-no. He left the uh, ninth pin. He chopped it. Try to cover it. Ball didn't come back enough time to pick it up. Now he's got an open frame on the fifth. Here comes Ross, lane 12. Looks good. Oh, very nice shot there by Ross Packard. Took advantage of the situation. Right now, Ross Packard is 469 over. That was for 15 games of qualifying. He's That's now uh, 11 pins. He's 11 pins away from Front. Hurt. I'm hurt, so. so this match right here is winner takes all for the title. Remind you, whoever's second here and third will be going to Hawaii. Gee, that must be a thought, huh? And Being able to bowl yesterday in the qualifying and uh, watch these guys today. Oh, yeah. Going to Hawaii must be fun. I'm pretty sure they're not thinking about that right now. Right now, they just want to win. That's right. Okay, here we go. Ross in the 11. The uh, sixth frame and doubles Beautiful. takes a big lead on Jason Hurd. Jason still does have a chance here, though. Yes, he does. He must still keep striking. Up. Right. Still early in the match, halfway there. He's got to play his game one at a time. One frame at a time for Jason. I was talking to him earlier, and I asked him, how does it feel to be in the top final position round once again? He said it was a little tough a couple of weeks ago. But uh, this time he said he was very confident and he was there for the title and here he is today. Good, signs of a champion right there. He'll be there. It's a situation over there on uh, 14 and 15 with Gene and Doug Wilcox. Uh, we got a, we've got a, we've 
got Jane going up on lane 14 right now. That's good, just have the baby split. For those of you, uh, baby split is the 310 for a right hander. We got Jason Hurd picking there. up the spare. Showing near the score, Gene Brule, 77 in the fourth with the spare. And Doug Wilcox, 60 in the third. We have Doug with possible 30 pin lead right now. Approximately a 30 pin lead. <clears throat> Sitting there, trying to stay in focus, not watching what Gene's doing. And nice spare, right, nice yep. spare by Gene right there. We have Jason up on nice 11 up. again. This is his seventh frame. Okay, let that one go, and it is a six light. count. Cluster of six. Looks like to me he's a little tight right now yeah, after that open he's, frame. He's not loose, no. <clears throat> Ball's not recovering in the back end like it was earlier. Now he's getting the light hits, and now he has himself a bucket. The bucket is the 2458 pin for the right hands, for the right hander. Correct. As he goes up for the spare, Five very four. nice. Looks straight at it and covers. On lane 17 and 18, it looks like Rick Manili has got a commanding lead right now with a three bagger. Tim Paul is just trying to, get, trying to get some strikes here, but looks like he's having a little bit of trouble. Jeff Ross going up into the seventh frame with two strikes. He'll really take a big lead here if he strikes one more time. That's nine. He has left the two pin, I believe. Tim Paul just struck on, I believe it's the seventh Ross frame. Threw that ball very smoothly. As you can see, it just ran up a little high into the head pin. He's going to have to go back for the spare. Doug Wilcox crosses over Brooklyn here. Well, that's a big bonus right there. Big bonus. Takes three strikes over Gene Brule. Close to 50 pin lead in six frames. Russ covers that spare. Now we have him up in the eighth frame. Good. We have Steve Fields on lane five and six. He has won national pro title. That's right, Paul. He won that in 1992. Right. And uh, he bowled exceptionally well that week. Very well. So it was a strong field this afternoon. We've had, we had balls like Ross Packard, Ricky Corona, Mike, Mike Taylor. Mike Taylor. Steve Fields, which has that uh, exclusive national tour title we have Larry Stevens from Los Angeles California three-time champion right. Rick Manili also three-time champion he won this year in Phoenix anything can happen on the on the tie on the position round anything can happen we see here Ross has just left a seven count in the eighth frame Let's see if Ross can take this up and he has a roughly 45 pin lead right now in the seventh frame possibly 25 as we get down to the end of the game now you can see how it starts to take a toll on these bowlers now they probably start pressing and they don't get the same results like they did in the early frame ross covers okay it. ross covers that spare yes and we have jason hurd up to lane lane 12 and has a chance to double here and get right back in the match yeah, that's right. If Jason puts two strikes together, it puts the pressure on Ross to make a good shot. And Ross strikes in the ninth and tenth, possibly have the defending champion taking the title again, 1997. That is so correct. let's have a look at Jason Hurd here on lane 12. What a great shot! Beautiful Dead shot. solid. That was great beautiful. shot. The crowd applauds it back here. Acknowledges a good shot by Jason. So as we can see on the scoreboard, we have Jason Hurd, 140 in the seventh frame with a strike, and Ross Packard, 165, but Ross has a spare, so here we see it, 165 oh, for Ross. We have to give congratulations to Tim Paul leaving a sour apple on lane 18 of 5-7-10. Wow, that's so very not thrilled really about that, not here. especially with the cameras around, but... Jason has gone Brooklyn for a Jason double. Hurd. 
He looks up into the skies. All right, Tim. Thanks God for that one. This is actually is going to turn out to a close finish between Ross as he hasn't struck in two frames and you might hear Jason might be able to take the title away from him. Ross getting up here in the ninth frame. Chance to strike. It looks good. No, oh, great shot by Ross. Great shot. Yes, indeed. Pressure's on. Foundation frame filled. Well, we're down to the tenth frame. This, this is it. This is it, Paul. This is what we all been waiting for. This oh is yes. Everybody standing around us. Who's gonna Who's gonna win the title? The tenth frame here is gonna be finished by Ross Packard first. Got to put a lot of pressure on Jason, but. Jason strikes out. Jason can shoot 230. If Ross strikes out, it's 245 and shuts the door on Jason Hurd while he's sitting down. So if uh, Ross, two strikes here to win the title. It's the first ball. It's a little light and it's got an eight count. Ross spares and strikes, shoots 225. Paul, I think we're going to have a close finish here, and Jason Hurd may have to put three strikes together in the 10th to take the title. That is correct. Uh, I just got a note right now that on lanes 19 and 20, we got Mike Taylor uh, is going for a 280 game. That's a big jump right now. Oh, that, could definitely. Put him, that could put him in the top three. Definitely. Taylor is only right now. He's seated seven. 70 behind Wilcox. Taylor's at plus 337. Wilcox at plus 404, so yeah, 70 he might pins. Have... He's possibly take Taylor, the lead. Here. I think he just left the 10 pin, but that still might give him enough room to make a big jump. So we'll soon find out as soon as uh, we're done here. Paul, well, let's have a look here at the final frame by Ross Packard. If he strikes, Jason Hurd is forced to throw a double in the 10th to win. That is correct. And yes, he does. Okay. All right. So this is it. All up to Jason Hurd now. All up to Jason. If Jason does strike out here, he wins the match by five pins. 230 to 225. But well, let's enough. take it one frame at a time. That's right. One strike at a time. That's all you can ask. He's taking a deep breath. He's taking some breath. extra time here. Get his thoughts together. Okay. So here we go. Taylor here. just shot a 269. So with bonus pins of 30 pins, that'll be 99 pins over. So he'll be approximately 427 pins over. Oh. Here we go. First ball by Jason. Oh, oh solid 10 pin. Ten, ten, Ross ten Packard pin. has taken the title. Oh. I mean, Jason Hurd is very, that. very well, very well bowled this, this week. Well, oh, excellent bowling. Very I mean, hard to beat a champion. Yeah. 21 titles makes it 22. That defending cool. his resident pro champion yeah. ship title, Ross Packard. Jason, Jason oh, he's bowled def excellent all week. He's bowled very, very well this whole year. Yes, he has. I he think, well, he will win a tournament very oh, soon. He'll be in the winner's circle oh, pretty soon. Definitely. Very soon, very soon. It's a situation here with Doug Wilcox and Gene Brule. So we pretty much know who's got locked uh, number, number one spot, number two spot. And it might... I don't know where Taylor might have uh, finished for the 427. He could be in third, but. Okay, and it's a nine count by down. Jason, but it's not enough to win the title. It's two. We got to look on lane Ross 13 Packard and 14. Wins. We got Gene Brule. 225 to 208 in the final game. Very excellent performance by these two great bowlers here. Very nice performance. Gene Brule and Doug Wilcox still finishing their match. It's like Gene just threw a strike in the ninth frame. Trails by 23. 178, as you can see, in the eighth frame with Doug Wilcox. And Gene Brule is 156 with a strike in the ninth. But Gene strikes out here. Three strikes in the tenth frame. He, he bowls 216 which forces a mark by Doug to win the match. Oh, 
he has thrown a seemingly the ball jumped very soon for him on the lane 13 it's it has been giving him some trouble looked like his speed was just a little off there and unfortunately Buster uh, the big four right <clears throat> this this is one of the one of the toughest spares to make and as Gene you can see he just picks off two opens a frame it's a frame it's 182 Doug Wilcox has won the match but we have Taylor at plus 427 so actually right now Doug Wilcox is going to Hawaii ladies and gentlemen as a rookie in his first year he's finished third in this Western region resident pro championship and he is going to Hawaii big strike in the 10th frame by Wilcox definitely your top three bowlers will be Russ Packard Jason Hurd and Doug Wilcox here will be going at a 218 plus bonus pins plus 248 we have the members of the uh, 1997 Western Region resident pro team consists of the defending champion Ross Packard again Jason Hurd which finished second in this year's event Doug Wilcox a rookie from California we also have in the as leading the point season point leaders this year is Rick Berry, Rick Manili, Bob Lasser. They're all going to Hawaii as, to represent the Western region in the Western National Resident Pro event, which the winner goes on to the Tournament of Champions, I believe. Correct, in Reno. Can they have any in Reno this year? Well, this is Paul Varela with Leo DiBonetto signing off. Thank you very much, Paul. We're going to start in reverse order. Finishing the pitch plays from San Maria is three original titles. Putting a check for $750. Let's hear for Rick Lee. <laughs> Thank you. 
We have uh, just concluded this tournament uh, for 1997, and we just want to congratulate Ross Packard. If you'd like to step over here, Ross, congratulations on your win. Thank you very much, Leo. Appreciate it. How do you feel after this uh, defending champion win two years in a row? Tell me, what does it feel like? Oh, it feels great. Uh, I'm looking forward to the opportunity of going to Hawaii, bowling the uh, resident pro, and uh, hope I do well there also. Any words there for Jason Hurd on that 10th uh, frame? How did you make you feel? Well, Jason threw the ball perfect. He threw the ball great. It was just one of those bad breaks in bowling. Uh, he, I don't think he could have thrown it any better. I was fairly fortunate. Great. Well, congratulations again, Ross, on your win, and uh, very best of luck at uh, Hawaii. Thank we'll you hope to much. see you at uh, the TFC now. Yeah, I hope so. That would be, that would be great. Okay, thank you. Thank Congratulations. You we're uh, we're going to call up Jason Hurd. He's our second place finisher here this afternoon. He has uh, finished in the last six events. He has finished third, fourth, second, eighth, fourth, third, and now second again. We'd like to call up Jason Hurd. Jason, congratulations on your uh, second place finish here. It's Thank you. You're bowling extremely well, throwing the ball very, very well. What did you feel in that 10th frame right here? You needed that strike and... I knew I needed a double. And I, I just been so close the last few tournaments. Just wanted to make sure I threw a good shot. The ball felt really good coming off my hand. I knew it was going to go in the hole. But that's... Sometimes they carry and sometimes they don't. It's what they call a bad break in bowling, I believe. Well, Jason, uh, now you're off to Hawaii, and this is your first time in well, the second year on the tour, on the Western Regional Tour, and first time going on the National Resident Pro Team. How does that feel for you? Well, I, it's, all I wanted to do is take the top three. It didn't matter if I won. I, I wanted to go on this trip, and I fulfilled my... my what I wanted to do for this tournament, even though it would have been better to win, but now it's a whole new experience to go over there and bowl a national in Hawaii. It's going to be, uh, what can I say, a new experience, a learning experience, and I just hope I'll do well over there like I did here. Great. I'd like to take this opportunity to uh, wish you well in Hawaii. Hopefully you can uh, take that title and you'll be bowling in the World Tournament of Champions in Reno, Nevada. Or, uh, 1998. Jason Hurd, congratulations on your second place. Thank Keep up the good work and best of luck. Thanks. You're welcome. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, this is uh, Jason Hurd leaving us right now, and we're going to ask Doug Wilcox. He is a rookie this year out of uh, California. I'm just going to ask him where he's actually from. I'm just going to call Doug. Okay, so, ladies and gentlemen, we have Doug Wilcox. Congratulations on his third later. place finish here this, evening, this afternoon. How did you feel of the tournament as a rookie? This is your uh, third, your second, third place this year. It's a very fine performance from you. Uh, how did you feel going into this last match? Going into the last match, I knew that third place, I mean, you always try to win, but uh, I knew that third place was just about as good as first, just to get the trip to Hawaii. And I was just going in trying to hold on to the position. I knew that I needed to pretty much just beat Gene, but also keep an eye on the people below us, because they can easily shoot a bunch of numbers, and they did. I mean, there, there are a couple of huge scores that I barely was able to keep over. I mean, yes, we had Mike Taylor shoot a, a very nice 269 yeah. game. Did uh, that give you any pressure at all? Did you feel anything from that? The funny thing is, um, he was two pairs down from us, and I was mainly keeping an eye on the one pair that was further away. And I saw Rick Manili shoot a 248, so I thought that I needed to make sure I stayed ahead of him. I didn't even know that Mike Taylor had shot 69, so I. I went in, it was pretty much, I just needed, I guess, a good count, but I was just going to make sure I kept on the lane. Um, no, going into it, I may have felt a little bit more pressure. It's probably better that I didn't know. Right. Now you're off to Hawaii. Uh, this third place here at the Western Region Resident Pro gives you eligibility to bowl in the National Resident Pro in Hawaii later on in December. Now as a team, what are your, what is your goal in this tournament as, as a rookie? Well, to tell you the truth, I haven't. I don't really know too much about the tournament itself. Um, I know that different regions send, I think, eight bowlers each. So I'm just. I feel that I can keep competitive in the Western Region, and it seems like the Western Region pulls out a number of the top players in the nation. So I have a feeling that the talent's pretty comparable. So if I can keep keep up here, then hopefully I can do pretty well in the national too. And as long as the pressure doesn't get to me, but uh, 
Great. Okay. Yeah. Doug Wilcox, congratulations Thanks on your third place finish. Thank you. Wish you all the best in Hawaii. Thank you. Okay. I'm Leo Di Benedetto, signing off here from Palo Alto Lanes, Palo Alto, California, for the 1997 Western Regional Resident Pro Championship event. Thank you.